The Elements of Harmony in Savior Worlds by RK Striker JK5. Chapter 20. Thunk. 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 Trixie stirred, shooting about in her bed. Don't wanna go to school, mommy, she mumbled, a tiny bit of drool dropping from her mouth onto her pillow. What a tragic magic with you. She suddenly bolted upright, four legs start to get Mommy She shouted, eyes wide and soldiers heaving. Trixie sat in bed for a few moments as the poundings continued. She looked around her before her horn glowed and rolled out of bed, lighting her a hose, and trotting out her small bedroom, more of a large carton. I'm coming she sounded lips curling. She paused as she glanced onto the door with her telekinesis and opened it. Whoever this is better have a good reason for waking me up. She stopped as her eyes beheld Queen Rose Dust, sparkling dawn, blazing day, and morning glory. She asked, stepping up into the flutter pony, no longer with a gray coat and lost expression, but a vibrant blue. Tracy's jaw worked a bit before she spoke again. Wh what? Morning glory opened her mouth. But a small squeak came out. She clenched her jaws shut, red coloring cheeks. She crocked into the crook of a foreleg and grunted, <clears throat> Sorry. She half whispered. She took a few breaths before speaking. Thank you for the flowers and kind words, she said, looking at a glance at the bouquet tucked into her husband's saddlebags. I appreciate what you did, Tracy. Blazing Jane tried it over, a big grin on the young colt's face. <laughs> yeah, what mom said. He reached out with a foreleg and patted Trixie on her forelegs of her arm. Thanks a lot. And for the directions, too. It led us right to Pontyville. Sparkly Dodd nodded. My family's together. It's body and spirit once more. He canted to his right and leaned against Morning Glory in an equestrian hug. He shut his eyes, but tears still drowned. Rose Dust nodded, her expression grave, but eyes twinkling. We shall not forget your kindness nor your help, she said, dipping her head slightly. Tracy's head lowered as well. N not a problem. A flash of white in the moonlight caught her eyes as she glitched to the left, seeing a golden chariot and a quartet of golden armored pegasi harnessed to it. Her jaw dropped slightly. Is, is that for Ketterlot? She asked as she tore her gaze away from the chariot. Sparkling dawn and chuckled slightly. <laughs> a little salty from Princess Celestia, so we wouldn't have to fly and walk home. He looked up to the night sky, stars still hanging overhead. Rather glad, too. After today, my wings are killing me, he said, waggling his ethereal wings. Tracy nodded and backed up through the door. Yes, a good thing. She bit her lip, but her cheeks puffed out a stifling yawn. She blushed and held a foreleg to her muscle. <laughs> Sorry about that, she said, chuckling nervously. <laughs> Long day at the end. I had to pull a double shift in my regular show, and you're probably not interested in that. She took another step back, her hoof hitting the bare wood of the interior. Rose does nine. Of course, Trixie. She looked the showmare over before smiling. We shall not forget your acts of kindness. And with that, she, sparkling dawn and blazing day, tried to the open naft of the chariot and boring it. Morning Glory tried out to Trixie and threw her foreleg around her neck, squeezing. Thank you again. She whispered before letting go, trying back to the chariot as well. As soon as he boarded, the ramp closed and the pegasi trotted off. The wings are furling. Within seconds, their hooves left the ground and the group was airborne, flying off into the night. Tracy watched them go, a sad smile on her face. You're welcome, she said before walking back inside. Dreamless sleep claimed her within seconds. Applejack's legs felt like lead as he trotted up the stairs of the Apple Family home, one hoof at a time. She slid the foreleg to the door handle and swung and opened, entering, I'm home! She called out, walking down the short hallway and past the family pictures to the living room. She spied Granny Smith in her rocking chair, dozing. Big Macintosh was sitting on the couch, pencil in mouth and order forms spread out before him on a tray. Apple Bloom Wade sprawled out of the living room rug, hiding legs kicking in the air. And near the fireplace was, Oh, sweet Celestia, is that what I think of this? Big Mac glanced up and gently dropped a pistol on the tray. Are you fooling? He drawled out. Applejack nodded, her eyes glued on the large oak chest with an apple seat lock. A uh, yep. Devil's grin crossed her mouth. Well, that's where she's at home. You know how scary a seat I get. She sighed up the Big Mac and plopped down next to him on the couch, groaning. Ah, must buy her. Big Mac said nothing, but his cheeks turned a mild violet. 
Grace Smith suddenly stirred, her head rising. What? She muttered, blinking. She tested her glasses and spied Applejack. Bye, Dad! She said. She slowly slid off her rocking chair, raising her fore legs so they draped over the rocker situated in front of her. Are you fun with everybody? She asked, slowly trying over to the chest. Great, Applejack gulped as Granny Smith runs the chest. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, Princess Luna told us about Nightmare Moon and such. She slid off her hat and pinned it to the chest with her hoof. Sleep her, will hype her to her and once she died. Applejack rolled out to her hoofs. What about Mike and her family? Applejack kept her eyes on Granny Smith. Twilight's over her house in Kentucky. She slid her back onto her head. Is that really key tuck where the herd runs? Big Mac glides over. Mike said, please. And Mike and her kinfolk are the basis for that magnate, and that's where they're all from. He started. <laughs> Shucks. Look at Nightmare Moon and Luna. Only two or three is the time for that tale to even be forgotten. Applejack slid off the couch. Once he slightly as her legs hit the hardwood floor, she barely noted Big Mac following her, and Applebone was standing by her side. Is that, is that Blake my is that Powell's Titus? She said, eyes wide and breath quick. Mary Smith nodded as she walked around the chest of the fireplace mantle, and a large key set on it. She opened her mouth and grasped it, leaning back and walking to the front. She pushed the walker away and hopped to her forelegs, but Applesack and Big Mac were by her side in an instant, catching her from her fore from hitting the floor. She nodded her thanks before slowly leaning her head and neck down. Poking at the chest with a key, before slipping it in, into the lock. This has been handed down from apple to apple for generations, she said, kicking the lock and turning it. The lock unlatched, and the lid creaked open. Gray Smith went to Apple Bloom. Now, Apple Bloom, you promise me you'll be all careful of this, you hear? Apple Bloom's useful face took on a serious mien belying her years, as she crossed the hoof over her chest before placing it over her closed eye. Grasp my hoe and help the fry, sleek a coke cook in my eye. She was sighed before hopping up and down. What's that? What's that? Big Mac placed a foreleg on the apple bones withers, holding her down. Well, give Granny a minute. He said. The stallion looked to the chest as Granny Smith opened it. So, what lay is in there? The lid swung open. There was a hardcover book inside with a lock and key tied to it. Several pictures, a folded map, Two cloth bags and a rectangular plastic case with white gears visible through a window. Grace Smith lay outside. I'm sorry, she said, hanging her head. She looked at Applejack, Big Mac, and Apple Bloom. I should have showed you all these before, after... I after Mom and Paul died, Applejack finished, reaching out with a foreleg to pat Granny Smith on her back. The other earth pony nodded, her body trembling. She reached down and gripped the map of her teeth, pulling it out and laying it on the floor. On it was a map of orchards and small buildings labeled Applejack Acres. In the upper right corner was an urban sprawl labeled Paradise City. Our family and this land goes back a lot more than when Princess Celestia gave us that land, Grant. She said, it goes back, back to Green Va Dream Valley and Princess to say itself. Applebo scratched her head, ruffling the bow still tight to her mane. Oh? Big Mac chuckled. <laughs> You'll have a reached out of Terrellis class, Apple Bloom. He looked at Granny Smith. Are you saying before the Nightmare War, the Apple Clay was here on this fair land? Applejack stared down at the map, her eyes wide as she traced the lines of Paradise City on it. Yeah, yeah, she exclaimed. That's about the boundary of every free forest nowadays. She looked at Granny Smith. So, back at Dragon Valley, the Apple Clay lives here? Granny Smith nodded. Her eyes no longer focused on the map or the present. She blinked and shook her head. Yep! She stepped around the map and back to the chest. She poked her head back down and slid out more objects inside. There's all these journals and actual videotape on the regional Applejack! Her head rose, the tape gently gritted her teeth. Think! Apple Bloom's eyebrow caught and rubbed her chin. Oh, what? Is that like those movable pictures at the Ponyville Theater? Gray Smith lowered the tape back into the chest and looked at her youngest grandchild. Yep, I said a lot more smaller than its color. Applejack, Big Mac, and Apple Bloom all gasped. <gasps> really? They all said. Gray Smith rolled her eyes. See the dirt bird thing with my own eyes. And before I even got my glasses, too. She waved a trembling hoof at all three. Now, 
as the old kid, ring the chest and what's inside the kid to a princess Leslie. These little things and spells and all that stuff inside to keep them fresh, but they need... She trailed off, mouth scrunched. What's the word? Run are you? Repentance? She ground. Ah, uh, yeah, you know what I mean. And all three of you need to watch the tape, too. She could do that for you. How does that cry to Big Mac? What do y'all think? Wednesday? She kicked slightly at the floorboards. Tomorrow, Mike's coming over to get help us with the wagon. Plus, we gotta get ready for Monday. Monday's the start of the week, and we gotta get the apples in the market. And my car's ready for the gala next Saturday. Big Mac glanced at the set ceiling. Been asleep before night. Yup. I could talk to Miss Cheerilee tomorrow when I could get Apple Bloom for school. He went to Apple Bloom as a wind grinder broke on her face. What do you think, Apple Bloom? Wanna go to Carolot Wednesday? Apple Bloom jumped from the air and danced around. Yay! 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 Get She spun around on one hind loop, four legs out. Not to admit, she dropped back down to all fours and grinned. Thanks, Big Mike. Thanks, Apple Jack. I promise I'll be real good when we go. Apple Jack looked at Granny Smith. What about you, Granny? Can't move along. Granny Smith sighed and shook her head. Nah, I saw this when I was a mayor like herself. She looked down to the chest. A smuggler tuggled at the corner of a wrinkled puzzle. Sides, somebody's got to stay behind to look out the sweet out blinkers when y'all go up for your adventure. She said, chuckling, <laughs> Now give me a hoof, please, and I'll get this story ready for you. Applesack, Big Mac, carefully placed all the objects inside the chest. Big Mac thumped the lid, closing it. Applesack then took the key in her mouth, slid it along the lock, and placed it onto the mantle. Big Mac looked at Apple Bloom. Okay, off the blade, he said, gently nudging her and directed the stairs. You got karate class tomorrow. Master her on butterfly. Don't lock it when you're too blue to do your stances. Apple Bloom sighed, but threw out four legs around Applejack's neck and then Granny Smith in a hug before trying out the stairs. And that, she called out before disappearing from view. Granny Smith slowly toddled up the Big Mac, stretching her neck out as much as possible, even as he leaned down to give her a quick kiss on her cheek. She also quick kissed Applejack before going up the stairs, head hanging on, muttering herself. Damn birds have apples, cause I ain't got time to reach tomorrow. Big Mac got outside. <sighs> well, hopefully Ma can help me get that wagon fixed. Glanced at Applejack as he walked past him into the stairs. AJ, you and Mark aren't planning on talking about anything tomorrow, are you? Applejack paused at the foot of the stairs and narrowed her eyes, smirking. I'll bring Maggie to us. I'll bet you and Mike will be far too busy for me to get um, any word in his ass. She played her right fork down on the first step before speaking once more. Of course, I also invite Fluttershy over for lunch. Bah! And with that, she galloped up the stairs. Most steps are going through the house. Big Mac's face turned purple as the upper lip curled back. I'll swear, you're looking your mouth, sister! He snorted, slowly trying not to bed. Celestia groaned and blinked as he approached her bedchambers. For a thousand years, she drew upon the full weight of the three wands of the heart, letting it sustain her through the long nights without Luna. Now that her sister was back, the power was once more evenly split between them. It lifted a burden from her shoulders and heart, but it also meant that once more she could get tired. She could almost feel the warmth of her bed and blankets. She imagined herself sliding under them, a glass of water on the nightstand, maybe some light reading before nodding off. She suddenly felt an urging read to read Tolkien, or maybe Asimov. Asimov, Celestia! Go with Asimov! Sorry. Big fan of Asimov. She so remembered Discord, vowing to check his statue tomorrow, first thing. A brief trip to the Royal Gardens, and maybe a picnic with Megan, and... Aunt Celestia! Aunt Celestia! Are you right? Hello, Aunt Sally! Celestia's drooping eyes shot open, and she looked over her shoulder, spinning her entire body around to face the one calling her name. A light pink alicorn mare with a kitty mark of a teal heart and multicolored mane stood there. Purple eyes blinking. A unicorn stallion with a white coat and a cutie mark of a shield stood beside her, clad in a red dress uniform of the Royal Guard. Aunt Celestia, are you all right? Princess Kay had asked, raising a golden clad hoof. Celestia blinked and her jaw dropped. Oh, horse apples! She exclaimed, smacking her foreleg against her forehead, causing the land to shake. Holy Hannah! Tracy's bed sh shifted as her eyes sat up and- Oh, what the herd? 
Or unless you're glad clicked on. If you're going to Clark Floyd over a father, son of a diamond dog! She flared as the Clark Floyd back down. In a large thick book with the title Intermediate Teleportation scrawled across the spine, slid from the bookcase and over to her, opening it up. Chapter 2, she began. Celestia walked up to Cadence in shining armor. I completely forgot to tell Megan about you, she said, looking at the pair. She let out a sigh. <sighs> oh, what a tale that was. Tears streamed from Celestia's face as her entire body shook. <laughs> Not fair! <laughs> she cried as she lay next to the heart of Ponyland, deep beneath the pon princess's pony's home. Her head lowered to the ground, and her eyes climbed shut. A uh, hundred years, and she's still <laughs> going to the damn moon! Princess Sparkle raised a foreleg, and gently struck Celestia's back, near where the rays collected to her torso. It's not your fault, she said as the other princess ponies gathered around her daughter. You had no choice. Celestia's eyes opened slightly. Megan would have found a way, she growled. She stood up, wings of furling as he faced the heart. So why couldn't I? I failed Luna, and now she's in the moon, and I'm the last, the only alicorn! Her horn glowed, and she ground her teeth together. Will I be like the Gruntles, due to extinction? Will I fade out too? Are the alicorns merely dolls? She stopped her hooves, sinking the cavern. Answer me! Tiffany hopped into the air and flew around the Celestia's back. How dare you! Neither you nor Luna were tools, Celestia! You were born from our love of Ponyland and all the creatures within. And tools, why didn't we keep you here and deny you worth our friendship? So you have her right in front of Celestia's muzzle and reached out with her four legs. You are our daughters, both you and Luna, created from our love and the land and those who are aside on it. The other princess points find her. That's right, Serena said. You are our daughter and we love you for that. Celestia danced away for Tiffany, biting her lip. I... I guess. She leaned over to stare at the raised platform, the crystalline structure that taunted. But I'm still so lonely. So tired. She glanced back at her wings, then rolled her eyes at her horn. There's no pony else like me. Not at all. She kicked into the dirt, wings folding back against her body. She looked at the heart. I just want someone who could be there for me, until Luna could be freed from the corruption. Please? The central column of the suddenly flared, a rainbow of colors dancing across its facets. The princess ponies all stepped or flew around, forming a wall in front of Celestia. Stand back! Prince Rose cried. It's never done this before! Sparkle nodded, her horn flaring to life. We'll protect you, Celestia! Celestia blinked as she shook her head, an expression of determination selling her facers. No, she strode forward. If it's bad, then I shall protect you! Her mouth worn as li thin line as the colors wavered. Heart, what is going on? The dark areas coalesced, coming together in a vague blur. It sharpened, and the field of air seemed parted like a curtain, dumping a pink equine to the ground before the heart felt dark once more. It, she, raised her head, looked around, blinking. What? What? Celestia walked forward as the princess pony stepped to the side. She looked at the newcomer over, knowing the nub of a horn tiny wings. She hugged closer her pink-colored body. Tears formed her eyes as she saw the small heart-shaped cutie mark on her flank. Hello. What's your name? She asked. The newborn alicorn looked up at Celestia and smiled. Lucky! She cried out, holding tiny four legs up and waving them in the air. Celestia stood there for a moment before kneeling down and leaning her neck out, letting the little one wrap her four legs around her neck in a hug. <laughs> I guess names can wait for a moment, she said, tears of joy falling like twin rivers from her eyes. Cadence leaned back, even as Celestia hugged her, bawling her eyes out. <laughs> Aunt Celestia! She cried out, stepping back and wriggling her body in a vain attempt to extricate herself from Celestia's grip. The princess sniffled, finally letting go and dropping back to all four hooves. <laughs> Sorry, she said, let out sigh. I have to tell Megan about you, Cadence. Celestia so said, guess. <gasps> and they'll be here tomorrow. She hopped up and down. You two have got to go meet her. Shining armor looked at Cadence. Dead to Celestia. He took a single step back. Your Majesty, I do have duties. As captain of the Royal Guard, I have to perform my... Celestia placed a hoof over his mouth and locked eyes with shining armor. Captain, 
When was the last time you saw Twilight? Sorry, Armor Cult. Uh, Twilight? His eyes darted back and forth. Well, about... Almost a year ago? He glanced at Kate's shrug. I think. Celestia grinned and nodded. Too long, then. I'll have a talk with Daryl Steele and get your schedule cleared. She started to try it off. Head held high and tail switching behind her. This will be great! Kate's signing armor watched Celestia as she disappeared around the corner. Think this will be a good time to tell Twilight about our engagement? Signing armor asked. Kate chuckled and leaned over. Give me signing armor a peck on the cheek. Probably the best idea. She rolled her eyes. Her knows how possessive she can get concerning you. And if not now, then when? <laughs> the week of the wedding? <laughs> she said, laughing at the end. Signing armor grin. <laughs> oh, yeah. He and Kay had turned and walked off. Heads close together and eyes more focused on each other than the hallway. I think she'd be perfect to go help and organize it, and So... Shining, uh, how does it feel to be known as the only member of the royal couple who so far has popped up in the vast majority of these live reads? Actually, it feels pretty good. I understand probably how Mayor Mayor feels about being the star of so, popping up in so many live reads. I know. I felt bad for kids. She doesn't pop up uh, as often as you do. I know. The smell came first, wafting through the room to Megan. Her nose twists, and a small smile crossed her face as she roused from her sleep. Her eyes opened and stretched out. Catholic? Eggs? Are you toast? She blinked as the door opened, and filled by light, and opened by Mike walking away with a tray of food. So I thought, oh yeah, it's Sunday, she said, looking at the alarm clock. Mike chuckled as he placed the tray across her lap. So I gave me a hand, I mean, hoof. He looked at her as he closed the door. Might have been done sooner, but she liked the microwave. He rubbed the prince of his nose. Almost went online to look it up, but then we lost her entirely. Twilight walked up to the bedside, a wide grin on her face. Your kitchen is so cool, Megan. That microwave oven, oh, I'd love to take it apart and put it back together again. She so held the four legs and caught her hose again. It's so neat. Megan took a sip of coffee, eyes rolling in the back of her head as the bare light the liquid washed away in fatigue. Oh, so good! She went to Twilight and rubbed her tail with her free hand. So, the microwave interests you? What about the other appliances? Twilight shrugged. Eh, most of the other stuff I've seen and used since I was a fool. She began tapping the pad of one hoof against the toe of the other. Gas stoves, fridge, freezers, blenders, the controls are different, but that's to be expected with hooves and hands. She suddenly looked at her hooves and then to Mike and his head. His hands. What you could do with hands. Make a story to laugh and ate your breakfast, wolfing it down. Buying humans, now I everything. She said as Mike picked up the tray and she rose, grabbing a robe from the closet. She extended the belt around her waist and walked over to Twilight. She went to Mare over and white rubbed her chin. Twilight, did you happen to sleep and say before falling asleep? Twilight took a step back. Her rabbit foot soon tail and braided mane switching about. Why? Whatever do you mean? She groaned and stood up on her hind legs, rubbing her forelegs around Megan's wrists. Oh, the ribbons. She just loves ribbons and bows. I tried talking to Danielle about human culture and those odd metal men she has posters of, but so many ribbons! It was worse than when Rarity first met me! Megan and Mike exchanged the look as Megan rubbed Twilight's head and right behind the main. It's all right, Twilight. I'll have a talk about with her after breakfast. She put her hands on Twilight's four legs and grabbed the slot. Meow! Twilight! Twilight go and dropped back down. She scratched the back of her head. <laughs> Sorry. Twenty minutes passed before Megan descended to the living room into the kitchen. Michelle, Daniel, Molly, and Danny were all ready at the table, each at various stages of a Sunday breakfast. Danny looked over at Twilight, tried it off to a chair and smart. <laughs> Freshy, freshy. He said, clutching a hand and waving it back and forth. Twilight's eyes narrowed to slits as a pitcher of orange juice and a cup of floated over. She poured herself a glass and took a large gulp. The ribbons are well attentioned, she said, pointedly avoiding looking at Michelle. Michelle slipped out by into his seat. Why, too much, she said. Twilight's mouth dropped. Her tail switched back and forth as Molly coughed. 
She took another sip of juice, drawing it out before looking to Michelle. A bit much, she said, grating her teeth. Megan walked over to the table, standing over Michelle. Michelle, Twyla is now a toy, she said, waving her finger at her. Now, apologize to her for putting all that into her hair last night. Daniel snickered, but a glare from Megan showed her up. Michelle sighed and looked over, meeting Twyla's eyes. I'm sorry, she said. Twyla bobbed her head. Thank you, Michelle. I accept your apology. She went to her tail and waved it a bit. I must say so. You do make excellent knots. Mike grunted, don't encourage her. He winked, said, winking and smirking as he sat down. So, what time are we leaving? He looked to a clock on the wall. It's nearly nine. Megan blinked. She went to the wall and rounded her out. Nine? I slept until nine o'clock? She suddenly turned on her heel and ran out of the kitchen. Still behind? Still behind? She sighed as she danced up the stairs and outside. Twilight blinked. She went to Mike. Early Phoenix? Mike nodded as he sipped his own cup of coffee. Every morning, 6 a.m. The cubs were working with ponies and summers on her own baby's farm. Then he spoke up. Yeah, could be dead annoying when I wanted to try to sleep in on Saturdays. He let out sigh, rolled his eyes. <sighs> Not all of us needed to get up and start teaching to TJ or mucking out the stables or... Well, Megan's a really great friend. Twice said. Her eyes started back and forth as everyone looked to her. What? It's really great of her to help out those ponies with their stables. Mike's mouth dropped. Oh. Oh! Twilight. All nerve ponies are. He waved his free hand in the air. Well, they're not lucky you or the other ponies in Ponyville. They're not. Wait. He looked at Molly and Danny. A little help here? What did you tell Firefly or Hothrob or by Earth? Molly's eyes started back at Thorf. What? Well, they used to say it was. You didn't tell him! Mike worried out. Twilight grumbled his slender hooves, rocking it slightly. Hey! Pony! Still here! She waited for everyone to turn her away before continuing. Okay. Not like me? How so? Are their cultural more. different? Dan cleared his throat. I am! Twilight. Clear almost all animals are. She trailed off for a second before scratching her head. They are not sleepy, said to him. Hollies and horses are not as intelligent as you are, Twilight. She swallowed. And they're. The whiskey, not slavery! She blurted out, holding up both hands. Twilight played. Okay, so they're like flesh sized chickens? Dale's mouth opened in for a moment before sibling nodded. Mike cleared his throat. <coughs> okay, yeah. They're like flesh sized chickens. He let out a breath. Oh. That was less painful than I thought. He looked at Danny and Molly. Thank you so much for your help. Molly's eyes narrowed. Hi, I never came out back then. We were a bit busy trying to forge a nation in a literal wilderness. Twilight cleared his throat and waited for everyone to look at her before speaking. <coughs> Mike, I saw the frozen packages of meat in the freezer. And why should I tell me about your teeth? She placed the hoof on her chest. I understand humans are omnivores. It's admittedly a bit disturbing, but I accept it. She paused and shrugged. shrugged. We ponies eat eggs, and Alalysis eats mice and other small creatures. My brother once wrote to me about basic training, and he had to... Had to... She stuck her tongue out and blinds. Ugh! He had to eat a squirrel for a survival course! Darn it, shining. <laughs> Mike glanced at her friends. I thought I hid those bear. He said... Picking at the eggs, he looked to Twilight's side. I'm relieved you can enslave their diet. Twilight shrugged. I can't accept it, yeah. I don't know, sir, other ponies can, Mike. Heck, I'm still a bit squeamish about it, she sighed. Sorry. Day waved her off. Ah, uh, don't worry, Twilight. It's how you are. He wrote the sin. It'll be stumbling blocks, though, if work gets out about Christia. Mike coughed into his hand. You mean when work gets out? He pointed to the ceiling. I'm shocked the FFC, the FCC, or the EZC have us attract cake hold down, and we don't have somebody knocking on our door. Not the lights in the solid rainbow in our backyard. He shook his head. I'm getting a headache just thinking about it. Twice shook her head. Don't worry, Mike. I'm sure any contact between humanity and Equestria, while still having bumps in the road, will ultimately prove beneficial for all. She looked at everyone and smiled. 
Friendship is magic, after all. Day shrug. Hey, two of my students are Nebulon refugees. Stranger things have happened. At that moment, Ma Megan emerged from the living room, wearing a pair of pants and blue shirt. Her rifle was slung across her shoulder, and she had her backpack in hand. Sarah, my late. She looked around at everyone at the table. So, what on this beyond the Cerex of history? She stood behind Twilight and looked down. And this, we ain't mind. I'm sorry. Twilight cranked her neck around. For what? Evolving with an omnivorous diet? She looked back and looked at her knife and fork off, siphoning off a piece of fried egg and sparing it. She looked around before reaching out and sopping onto the egg bed. Then he looked up at Megan. Mom, why do you have your rifle? She asked, pointing at her shoulder. Megan glanced at her left hand and shrugged. I am going to Equestria. Why? Wow. Daniel's mouth hung open. And did you use it last time? Megan planted her hands on her hips and narrowed her eyes at her elder daughter. And I took a trip into the Everfree Forest the first time I was there, Danielle Whistler Witters. I know perfectly well what to bring a trip to Equestria. She went to Danny and Molly. I forgot. Are you two coming? Molly shook her head. Sorry, Megan. Now I gotta get back to the clinic and see what's up. She wolfed down the rest of her breakfast and stood up, heading to the dishwasher. Danny bobbed his head. And I've got pray for some freedom. He grabbed his wheelchair and pushed away from the table. Excellent breakfast, by the way. Twa. There was a sudden knocking at the door. Megan quickly slid her rifle off her shoulder and placed it against the wall. Twilight, stay there. She said, turning to walk into the door. Who is it? Twilight grunted. What? Why? She slid off the chair and began trying to the living room. Megan, can't I meet them? Megan stopped to look down at Twilight and tried it up. I don't think it'll be such a good idea. She went to the kitchen. Matt? Yep. Mike sighed and left the table, quickly reaching for a tube. Twilight, I'll be the best thing to hang back until we see who it is, alright? He glanced at his wife. For Megan's sake? Twilight's head drooped as she scowled, but turned and walked back to the far end of the kitchen, hunkering down beside Michelle. Michelle turned around and patted Twilight on the head. Want some help with the ravens? Twilight looked herself over, but shook her head. I think they're just fine, Michelle. Megan opened the door. I feel like the man about her age, or a few old, or eight years older, with wide rimmed glasses, streaks of gray, and his short brown hair, and forced castleness about him. He held a briefcase in his right hand and extended his right. Um, hello. Are you Mich Megan Richards? Megan looked him over before accepting the proffered hand and shaking it. Yeah, I mean, you are? He ran screen to say so said, Huh, <laughs> sorry. Name's Tip Chase. May I come in? Megan blinked and her mouth opened. A small squeak came down before she pointed and waved her head. It's like, Chip Place? I is in President Abernathy's chief scientific advisor? I is in. I is in. Yeah. Mike was by Megan's side, a hand on her shoulder. Megan, what is it? Chip cleared his throat. <clears throat> Sorry, didn't mean to start at you, Mrs. Richards. I've actually become a fan of your work. He went around for a second. But if you're wondering, yes. He looked her up, and his eyes locked with her. We know about the interdimensional gateway, and the possible equines. Glass aside, Twilight emerged from the kitchen. So, may I come in, please? 